When you open Turtle, you'll see the company dashboard. This provides you with an overview of all the content within the company account, so you can see collectively how it's performing, with things like number of readers, shares, and signups. Reads and Readers tells you how many times your story has been read and how many people have read it. A reader needs to take an action such as turning the first page to be counted as a read. If they don't take any action, they'll be counted as a bounce, which is shown here. When a reader completes a lead capture form on the back page or within an immerse level, they are shown as a sign up here. If a reader shares your story using the share buttons within the content, that will be counted here. In the company dashboard, you can also see how readers are accessing your stories. Discover how people opened your content by looking at the reads by source. Did they click on a story link direct, for example, from an email, or did they come from your website or a social network? Using this data can help you decide where promoting your story is working best. Find out what device people are using to read your stories here. For example, are more people reading your story on a mobile than on desktop? You can also see where your readers are located physically by looking at reads by location. Perhaps you're targeting a particular market and would like to see if your content is starting to make an impact. You can easily filter all of this data by using the drop-down menus at the top of the page here. For example, if I wanted to see the data from the last two weeks for any stories read on mobile, I can easily filter it like this. You can now also subscribe to receive weekly emails which include a summary of these analytics to help you monitor the performance of your content week by week. You just need to click on subscribe at the top of the dashboard, toggle the subscription on and click confirm. As well as being able to easily monitor your performance on a weekly basis, you can also now download an in-depth report of your analytics for both an overview of all your stories or a particular story by clicking on the download button in the top right corner of the screen here. Now let's take a look at what to check for in the analytics of an individual story and how you can use the information to improve the performance of your content. You can do this by clicking on the story you would like to look at in the table here. Depending on how you publish your content, you may have already checked on your click-through rate and know how many times your story was opened. That is helpful information as it tells you whether your messaging on getting people to actually open the content is working. But when they did open it, did they stay and actually read it? You can find out by looking at the readers figure in your story dashboard and the bounce rate. Readers shows you the number of people who took an action, so they actually moved past the cover page and continue reading. And bounces are people who took no action beyond the front cover. If you're in a scenario where your bounce rate is high, consider whether your messaging and front cover work together. If people are expecting to read about peanuts and your front cover is about avocados, they're unlikely to hang around and continue reading. You're able to add a social sharing description in the publishing settings, which will be visible if you share your story on social media. Here is an example of how this will look, and it's important to check that your social sharing description is matching your front cover too. If readers have clicked in from seeing the content on social, they'll be more wary of continuing through the content if it's not what they expected. You can check the overall average read time here to get a good idea as to how long people are spending reading your content. This is a very meaningful metric, as it tells you whether this particular content is engaging and relevant to your readers. It's okay if it's not, it just means that you now know you need to make it more engaging, and in time, you might decide not to make this piece of content again in the future. This will allow you to save time and focus on content that your audience actually want to read. You can also review average read time for each chapter here. Check how many readers access each surf level, and the percentage that click down into each immerse level, and how long they stayed there to read the content. Again, this gives you a pretty good idea as to which chapters are working well and which might need some work. If a chapter isn't being read, you'll be able to see that, and you can then consider what changes you could make, or whether to remove the chapter from the content completely. Bad analytics aren't actually negative. They allow you to see what isn't working and save you time by focusing on content that works. For example, if you're in a scenario where you're creating a newsletter every month and one topic consistently has low read times or isn't being read at all, even after you've made changes each month to try and improve it, think how much time you could save your team by removing that chapter from your newsletter completely. 
It's hard to say what a good average read time is. It all depends on the content, how long is the section, and if it's mostly text or imagery. You'll have a good idea as to whether the average read time is reasonable for the content in your Immerse. But if you think it's low, consider whether the content looks appealing and whether there are any interactive elements. Just adding an image to break up text or pulling out some text in a feature box or quote can make all the difference. If we take a look at this example, you can see that this page contains a lot of text and the layout isn't very engaging. There are a few simple things you can consider to improve your Immerse pages, such as breaking up blocks of text with images, feature boxes and quotes. You can also add some interactivity to make the content more engaging, such as including polls or videos. By seeing which chapters are engaging your readers and which aren't, you're going to know what subjects they're interested in. This is brilliant information to have, as it means you're going to know what to talk to them about when you pick up the phone to call them, or what to write about next. The conversion rate lets you know whether your surf pages are engaging readers enough to make them want to click into the Immerse level and read the chapter. The heading and the image play an important role. Make sure headings stand out and are easily read, and your image is good quality. There's nothing worse than a low-res image to make your content look uninspiring. If your average surf page metrics are high, or your conversion rate is low, there are a few things you can consider about your surf pages. Firstly, is your heading too long? If we take a look at this example here, you can see that the heading is very difficult to read because it's so long. Just by swapping the heading and subheading over, you can see how much easier it is to read. It's also important that you choose the right style that will make the heading stand out and that you choose an image that is great quality and doesn't clash with the heading style or position. Now you've had a look at how each chapter is performing, you can look at what made your readers engaged. As I mentioned earlier, adding more interaction to your Immerse levels in the form of widgets such as videos, polls and shareable quotes can help to engage readers and ultimately make them read longer. You can view the interactions within this table and see which of these the readers engaged with most. These metrics can give you very valuable information. For example, if you find that your videos are being watched on average for one minute, you know that next time you create a video, it doesn't need to be three minutes long, it just needs to be one. You can also view reader dashboards for any of your known readers and view their individual reading experience. Known readers occur when an action has been taken which allows Turtle to determine who the reader is. For example, they signed up in the story, they followed a personalised URL, or they entered a username and password to access the content. This is very powerful information that allows you to see how individuals are consuming content. For example, if a sales team have a piece of content which is product-based, they might be able to see that one reader spent all of his time reading the chapter about one particular product. This is powerful information that the salesperson can utilise when they call that reader, already knowing which product he has shown most interest in. Another example is adding a username and password to a sales proposal story. Once a reader uses a username and password to access the story, their individual analytics will be available to view. These could provide information such as that one reader spent most time reading the chapter on pricing, and another reader spent the majority of their time reading the chapter about the customer service available. This allows the team to make educated guesses around what is most important to these readers, giving them a huge head start before following up with a sales call. So that's all of the analytics dashboards in Turtle and some tips and tricks about how to use the analytics to improve the performance of your content.